Take your copy of God's Word and turn to Exodus chapter 12, verse 38, and then uh, on over to Exodus 14, Exodus 12, 38, and Exodus 14. This is, this is such a cool Sunday because we get to talk about, usually it's the first Sunday in the year that we get to talk about kingdom builders and just have a moment of celebration. A lot of bad news out there. Let's have some good news. Can we just have some good news? I want to take a moment to celebrate all that God is doing. Let me just remind you quickly of our system. So about three and a half years ago, we shifted systems, giving systems, not uh, not different than biblical. It's just very biblical. So we say that we give the first, we return. We really don't give, you know that. Uh, it's all the Lord's. And so we return the tithe. You don't give the tithe because it already belongs to the Lord, according to Malachi chapter three. And so the first uh, layer of our giving is returning the tithe. You can't pray your way into financial blessing. You have to obey your way into financial blessing and you obey through the return of the tithe. And so if you've returned the tithe to the Lord, then you walk in that Malachi three anointing protection, blessing, no pandemic can touch your finances, no stock market up and down, no job loss. They're not in control. When you tithe, you say to your boss nicely, you're not in control of me. God's in control of me. You say to the stock market nicely, you're not in control of my retirement. The Lord is. And that is a peaceful feeling when you transfer ownership of everything that you have to the Lord. The second layer of our giving then is through kingdom builders. Kingdom builders is our giving above and beyond the tithe. And it goes to three areas. It goes to global missions, local church expansion, and future Christian leaders. And I just want to celebrate that during a global pandemic, during a global pandemic, the Multiply family of churches gave over $750,000 towards kingdom builders. Now, watch this. Let me go through this quickly. You add to that Dream Center grants of almost 300000 Cornerfield Market contributions of 25000 We then tithe, Multiply Church tithes off of our, the tithe that you bring into the storehouse. Through that, we were able to give uh, $453,000, almost $454,000 to missions to support our missionaries for a grand total of over $1.5 million. Now, come on somebody celebrate God's goodness in the house look at what what I want as they bring up this picture of our missionaries these are just a representation of our missionaries so literally all across the globe why don't we support a missionary in Australia Hillsong can't do it all by themselves come on we need to send a a missionary to Pastor Harrison we need to get somebody somebody's getting called right now like like yeah I feel called to, to Australia but almost on every continent right God's kingdom is at work today because of your generosity and your giving. Exodus 12, 38. Exodus 12, 38. And this year of freedom and this year that God is going to bring you into a greater level of freedom, your business, your family, your kids, your grandkids, your future family, whatever single adult, your friends around you, whatever age or stage you are in life, that we believe that God is walking you and the people of Multiply Church through a greater level to a greater level of freedom than ever before. For, but Exodus 12, 38 says this, and I love it. Tucked in is a s- tiny little verse. Tucked in, it says they had just walked through the Passover and they were getting ready to walk through the Red Sea. And it says many other people. Many other people went with them. That's what Kingdom Builders is. It's many other people. Many other people is your kids and your grandkids. Many other people is the new neighbors that just moved in down the street. Many other people are those 50 house churches that we planted last year in India, and they're going to meet today, and all kinds of people are going to come to faith in Jesus. Many other people, and that's what Kingdom Builders does. It enables us to bring many other people with us. Let's press pause. I'll get back to that, back to the Red Sea now. Exodus chapter 14. Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses, order the Israelites to turn back and camp by Pi Haroth between Migdal and the sea and camp there along the shores across from Baal Zephon. And then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. Say confused. They're trapped. Say trapped. They're trapped in the wilderness. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase. Say chase. He will chase after you. And then here's the thing. God, I don't understand this, but the Lord says this. God says, I've planned this. 
Y'all have, do you guys have that friend that when they come up with that plan, you feel like you end up in a worse spot than you did before they had that plan? Oh, let's try that restaurant that we've never tried before, and you find out why you've never tried that before. Oh, here's a shortcut. Let's go that way. Come on, you have that friend. You have that family member. Just be nice because you're sitting next to them. You have those people. I just got to say, God, I know you're perfect. I know all of your plans, but this, y'all, this sounds like a Scooby and Shaggy plan to me like it sounds like your God your plan is that I'm confused I'm trapped and I'm chased it says that the Israelites felt confused and they felt trapped do you know why they felt confused and felt trapped because they were confused and trapped sometimes it gets worse before it gets better sometimes on the other side of 21 days of prayer this is what I just talked about the devil hates you so much that even after you're covered under the blood of Jesus like we preached about last week the devil will unleash all all of hell upon you. You feel confused. You feel trapped. You feel chased. You feel confused, trapped, and chased. I want to preach. How do we walk through this? How do we get through confusion and feeling trapped and feeling chased? Um, several, uh, uh, I guess it was several weeks ago, about a, a month ago or so, it was before Christmas, another family that we're friends with, our, our kids and I and uh, uh, went to Brown Mountain Beach. I don't know if you've ever been there in North Carolina. Uh, highly recommend it. I'd never heard of it. It's outside of Lenore. You can drive, you can hike, you can do all these kinds of things. It's up in the mountains. But we had went to this place, and there's a huge waterfall, and then there's a little pool there, and then there's another little waterfall and another little pool. And um, my friend Dwayne was like, man, there's a rope, and you can climb down the cliff under the bottom of that. And so, you know, we were all excited about that. Dwayne climbed down the rope. He had some trouble. But I was like, I was, I was halfway down before before he was at the bottom because and then the kids were getting ready to to come down the rope the problem was with this that he had climbed down the rope in July and this was December have you ever climbed down a cold rope have you ever tried to hold on to a cold rope? Have you ever tried to hold on to a cold rope on the side of a cliff where there was ice and it was wet and the shoes that you were wearing were not conducive to any kind of grip? And so what was happening, what was happening is Dwayne was at the bottom. He was still hanging on to the rope because there was ice and a short little ledge. And then he was going to end up in this pool of water. And I'm just hanging on and I'm trying to speak calmly, but there is no calm going on in my heart. What I'm trying to do is tell all of our six children kindly back up my daughter is like a leap first and then ask questions and so she's getting ready to come down I'm like Anna let's just wait until daddy gets down this first and I'm like I don't know if I'm gonna make it down what I really thought was gonna happen I thought I was gonna slip and like a bowling ball just knocked Dwayne and I and we were going to the water that's what I really thought and Dwayne's just kind of casually holding onto the rope and I'm just like nicely hey hey bud do you think you could move just a little bit there as I'm holding on I'm taking the rope I'm wrapping it around my biceps so I'm just kind of trying Trying to hang on there in that moment so I kind of just slid my, my I'm losing feeling in my fingers I slid down the rope and we get to the bottom there and I'm telling you I felt confused and I felt trapped I didn't feel chased but I felt a little mad at Dwayne in that moment and so what was going on there little West and Dwayne's three-year-old up at the top of the mountain I found out that he told the rest of the kids that their daddies were going to die is what I found out like he had told the, the kids but there we are I was very confused I was very trapped I had three options at that point Option one was to try and climb up the rope. I didn't think that was going to work because I couldn't get any grip with my feet. Option two would be to walk across the top of the smaller waterfall on these slippery rocks, get over to the other side, and then just start walking and hope there was a good place to cross down the stream. Option three, which, and this is what I was getting ready to do, just jump in the water and swim for it. That's what I was getting ready to do. Fortunately, Dwayne was like, well, let me take off my shoes and socks, get a little better grip, and try to climb up the rope. He made it. This was the cliff. This was me coming up. You can see that I have no shoes on. I have no socks on because we were trying to get up that. We made it. We made it. I'm not very obviously because I'm standing here today. But what do you do? Like, what do you do in those situations when you feel confused, trapped, and like maybe fear is chasing you? Let's go to the word of God. Verse 13, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians will see today, the Egyptians that you see today will never be seen again. I'm believing that God gives you such breakthrough today that the thing that is chasing you will never show its ugly face in your life again after today. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay 
calm. And then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so that the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea onto dry ground. So what do you do when you feel confused and trapped and chased? The first thing that God tells us through Moses is stay calm. Stay calm. I speak calm over you. I speak peace over you. In the middle of this crazy world, the people that can remain calm in the Holy Spirit will win the day. In the middle of all of this turmoil, the people that can maintain their calm. I was picking up some pine needles from a local home improvement store yesterday, and uh, uh, there weren't very many people there. It's cold and just kind of, you know, not a, not a day to do a lot of outdoor work. But I, I got my pine, I paid for my pine needles, and I pulled my truck around and backed up to the trailer there where they have the pine needles, and then an associate has to meet you out there. And so I waited for 10 minutes, and I'm just kind of looking out, and there's not a, lot of, not a lot else going on. So, you know, where's, where's my help? And I'm, I'm becoming uh, not calm is what I was becoming and so I went back around to the cashier and I just asked nicely for another you know for a sales associate to come out and she said yeah I'm so sorry and so I went back out there and waited another 10 minutes and I'm becoming more and more not calm as I see other people doing other things but none of the other things involve helping me and so I'm becoming increasingly not calm and so I'm rehearsing in my head the not calm things that I'm going to say to the guy when he finally comes out and so I'm rehearsing all of this and I'm getting a little worked up and then I happen to see out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, oh my goodness, come on, Doug. Why did you put a Multiply Church sticker? <laughs> right there on the window of my truck. And I'm just going to confess to you. I'm just going to confess to you. My first thought was not change my attitude. My first thought was how can I rearrange the garbage bags in the back of my truck to cover up the Multiply Church sticker? That was my first <laughs> thought. And I just confess that to you. Come on, don't, don't pretend like you haven't been convicted by the, by the Multiply Church magnet on the back of your, you cut somebody off in traffic and then you're like, oh, can't invite them to church anymore. So you just, Lord, give me another, give me another opportunity with somebody else but sometimes 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 we want to cover up our Jesus God just give God just give me a God just give me a moment we cover up sometimes we want to cover up our Jesus with our trash just so we can spew venom from our mouth and then repent and then go back afterwards if you're calm you win the day the Holy Spirit is going to begin you. Watch this. I didn't say walk with weakness. You walk with calm. When you walk with calm, you walk with a greater power. You're in control of the situation. Your emotions are no longer your emotions are no longer in control of the situation. The Holy Spirit working through you. Calm is not a state of weakness. Calm is a state of authority and power. Stay calm. The second thing is to understand that the Lord himself will fight for you. The Lord himself will fight for you. How many, uh, how many Buccaneer fans in the house today? Super Bowl Sunday. One Buccaneer fan. How many... <laughs> How many uh, Kansas City Chiefs fans wave at me? Um, about five. Uh, how, many, how many of you hope that both teams lose? How many of you have given up on the NFL? How many of you are waiting for the Panthers to do anything? Like, okay, all right, there we go, there we go. But, like, don't, don't hate me here, but what's, what you got to feel good about as a, as a fan, like, to our one Buccaneer fan and to our five, five Chiefs fans in the house today, what you gotta feel, you gotta feel fairly good about your quarterbacks, right? Even if your team is losing, if they're down by 10 in the third quarter, you gotta be like, I got Tom Brady. I got to, like, it's, it's okay. Everything's coming against me, but I got Tom Brady. Even if you are down by 42 points in the fourth quarter and Patrick Mahomes is getting sacked 25 yards behind the line of scrimmage and has the ball in his left hand and his helmet is twisted around so he can't even see anybody, you got to feel pretty good about your chances because he's probably going to swing around, underhand the ball through his legs to Travis Kelsey for a 98-yard gain. That's probably what's going to happen. Like, you got to feel pretty... 
like I got, I got Brady or I got Mahomes. Listen, you may feel like in life you are down by 10 right now. You have the Lord God himself, the Lord who is commander of angel armies, the risen Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. He's on your side. I'm telling you, you ought to feel pretty good about your position in life. With God on your side, it's looking good. It's looking good. The third thing is keep moving forward. Keep moving. I read verse 13, and then I read verse 15, and I got, I got stuck in between those two verses. Because in verse 13, Moses says this. He says, and he, and he came up with all good, kinds of good things to tell the Israelites. He said, God's on your side. He said, stay calm. But in verse 13, Moses says, just stand still. But in verse 15, God says, Moses, why are you still praying? My translation. Stop praying. You don't hear God say that often. I don't preach many sermons entitled, stop praying. Usually it's like, pray more. But God says, why are you crying out to me? Get moving. And I read those two verses, and they seemed like they were opposites. And so I got stuck between stand still and keep moving. Have you ever gotten stuck between stand still and keep moving? The Red Sea is in front of you. God, it seems like I'm facing an insurmountable barrier ahead of me. Pharaoh's army is chasing me down and I feel stuck. I don't know whether to keep praying or take a step. And can I tell you, when you feel stuck, when you feel emotionally and spiritually paralyzed, the Lord says the way is always forward one step forward hear me your anointing is not behind you your blessing is not behind you your favor is not behind you your victory is not behind you I get so mad sometimes at my iPhone when I pull it out and I open it up and I turn and, I, and it's the pictures and you have like different things you can choose them by places or friends and family or different things like that and one thing that my iPhone has on there that I get so mad at it says the best years of my life and I say like I look at that and I'm like the devil is a liar don't get me wrong hear me they were some good years I enjoy looking at the memories that we made as a family on the beach I enjoy looking at pictures and seeing what God has done through the years but my best Best years. Those are not the best years of my life. The best years of my life are ahead of me, and your best years of your life are ahead of you too. I know that. I know that because if they weren't, God would have taken you up to heaven already. And so the fact that you are here breathing, I speak over you that the best years of your life are ahead of you. You're going to see your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren do great exploits in the land. You're going to see your neighbors come to faith. We're going to see on the other side of this pandemic our multiply family of churches more full winning more people to Jesus than we ever have. We're going to plant more churches in India. We're going to double our missionaries. We're going to take so many missions trips we won't even know who's gone on a Sunday our best days are ahead of us these are not the best years of my life they were some good years I'm thankful for them God did a lot of great things but your way to breakthrough is always forward it's always forward and here's what we're going to do we're going to take our step forward and take as many people with us as possible I feel like I see the Red Sea parting. This is a year of freedom. This is a year of God's favor. And what the Lord would say to us, I believe, is how many people, it's a question that he wants to ask us, how many people do you want to take? I got, because I'll hold the, what, what the Lord, what I feel like the Lord is saying is I'm going to hold the walls of water back until you get as many people across as possible. What is holding back the return of Jesus is that he is waiting, God is waiting for us to get as many people across the Red Sea as possible. And when we complete our task, then the waters will close in the return of the Lord, I believe. I believe that's scriptural. In First Peter, it says that God is not slow keeping his promises as some suppose, but he is waiting that all men should be saved. And so the Lord 
Lord, there is a window of opportunity. The Red Seas are parting ahead of us. And that's why I don't know when Jesus is going to return. Jesus himself, the Bible says, Jesus himself it says no man knows the hour. The son doesn't even know the hour because if the son knew it, he would have passed it on to the disciples. And so the father knows the hour. We don't know the hour. But can I just tell you, doesn't it feel like it's kind of soon? At least it's sooner than it was. And I believe that there's a window of opportunity that the Red Sea is opening. You are empowered in the name of Jesus to open the sea in front of you. And then you are empowered to take as many people with you as possible. That's what Kingdom Builders is about. It's about taking as many people with us as possible. Would you grab your booklet or would you grab your app? Those of you that are, that are home and you can do it either way. That app has been uh, amazing. I use it almost daily to access content and give and everything. But on the app right there, you just tap uh, Kingdom Builders and you can download the booklet and you can make a pledge. Those of you that are in the house, if you want to do this, take the card and there are offering places at the end. You can, you can put in that card. But what we want everybody to do is just to write down your name, email, and, and a Kingdom Builders. What I am believing God to do in and through me, above and beyond my tithe. If you need, I'm a processor. Sometimes I need to uh, take this, think about it. And so if you want to take a week to do that, hold on to it. Talk to your spouse. Pray about it. That's okay. Pull up your budget. Look at this. My challenge to you would be this. Let's not do the same. That's boring. Let's not do less. That's going backward. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. How many people can we see come to Jesus this year through our generosity and through our giving? Let me, let me close with this. In 1947, there was a young uh, pilot by the name of Chuck Yeager who wanted to break the sound barrier. And uh, scientists were telling them, don't do it. Physicists were saying, engineers were saying, don't do it. And to be honest, they had, a lot of, they had a lot of good reasons not to do it. Like a lot of people had died trying. But on March the 1st, uh, 1947, Chuck Yeager climbed into, the, climbed into the cockpit of this experimental Bell X-1 air, aircraft. And they put that in the, in the belly of a, of a bomber, of a... a a uh, fuselage of the bomb, bomber and the, the bomber climbs up to, to about 30,000 feet and the, the belly opens and that X-1 gets lowered out of there and it takes off and he goes up to 42,000 feet. See, the problem, the reason why that nobody could break the sound barrier is, is sound waves. It's sound waves. So there's sound waves all around you, right? As I'm speaking, there's sound waves around you as the platform creaks, as Pastor Adam plays behind me on the piano, as somebody clicks a pen, as a, as a shoe is shuffled across the carpet. There's sound waves all around us, but, but we can't feel the opposition of the sound waves because we're stationary. So even though there is opposition from sound waves, the only way that you feel the opposition is when you begin to move and when you begin to move faster. Do you, do you understand why it feels like the devil's so against you? It's because if you were just sitting stationary, not doing anything for Jesus, why would the enemy attack you? But now because you're doing something for the kingdom of God, now it feels like there's stuff coming against you. And so Chuck Yeager goes up to Mach 0.996. And things go crazy. The instrument panel goes haywire. He can't even feel. He doesn't even know how fast he's going. The cockpit of the plane begins to shake violently. And he's got a decision to make in that moment. Am I going to pull back or am I going to press on? Chuck Yeager said, forward, I'm going forward. He gets up to, to uh, uh, almost Mach 1 and he, his eyesight goes blurry. His stomach begins to churn and he's got a decision to make. Am I going to pull back or am I going to press on? And Chuck Yeager said, I am going to press on. And as he put the fuel forward, what happens, happened was he hit Mach 1 and there was a sonic boom in the atmosphere. And Chuck Yeager said this, on the other side of that sonic, sonic boom in the atmosphere, it was like a sea of glass. Why? Because everything that was against him was now behind him. When you hit breakthrough, all of the forces of hell that were against you are going to be behind you. And it's going to be as smooth as a sea of glass. And you have the authority, you hear me Moses? You have the authority to prophesy your 
breakthrough. The staff is in your hand. And I speak over you that you are going to begin to walk in the authority of Moses. That Red Sea, you're not going back. You can't go back. Pharaoh's army's chasing you down. But you're going to learn to extend your hands in praise. You're going to learn to extend your hands in prayer. And you are going to hear in the spirit a sonic boom in the atmosphere and all the forces of hell that were against you are going to be behind you. You're going through and you are going to bring as many people with you as possible. Would you stand all across this place? Would you stand all across this place? And one more time, would you just stretch forth your hand? Would you stretch forth your hand? Would you just begin to prophesy that? Red Sea's open in the name of Jesus. Authority be open in the name of Jesus. This is how I fight my battles, God. The sonic booms are happening in the spirit right now in the name of Jesus. God, that I believe that the Egyptians, God, I believe the wheels are coming off the chariots. The wheels are coming off the chariots. That Pharaoh's army isn't going to make it through the Red Sea. But you're going to make it, child of God. You're going to make it on the other side. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're believing for breakthrough in the atmosphere today. And I speak over your people right now that this is not a Sunday morning thing, but the staff in your hand, you have the authority to exercise that this week. So when the devil comes against you and it feels like you're confused and you're trapped, you prophesy over your heart and you say, heart, be calm in the name of Jesus. And you find a place to get away and you lift your hand and you say, Red Sea, open up in the name of Jesus. I'm going to walk through. I'm going to walk through. The devil can't make it on the other side of the Red Sea. I'm walking through. My family is going through. Our finances are going through. Our marriage is going through in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, I pray that you will enable us to bring as many people with us as possible if you're here today and you haven't said yes to Jesus the Red Sea is open for you too it's open for you too and if so if you don't have a relationship with Jesus as I pray this out loud you just pray this silently just say something like Jesus I'm sorry forgive me of my sins I want to come to the cross and accept you into my heart and into my life And help me to live, Jesus. Help me to live wide awake to the love of God and fully alive to my purpose in Jesus' name. I need all the people that are growing through the Red Sea to give them a shout of praise in the house today. I hope the service today made a difference in your life. If you decided to follow Jesus, I would love to know. If you'll text ALIVE to 94000, we have some resources that we would love to give you that will help you as you continue to follow Jesus. To stay connected all throughout the week, check out our app. You can find it on your app store by searching for Multiply Church Family. Thanks for joining us today. I can't wait to see you again.